This is Twit. Sundar Pichai, the Google CEO. By the way, this is not an Alphabet event. This is a Google event. Google, right. So in past Google IOs, Google was everything. Mm -hmm. Remember Sergey Brin uh, and team parachuting in, skydiving in? That was, that was to demonstrate stuff that is no longer part of Google. Yeah. So this was really kind of a little more, a little less interesting. It was a little more constrained uh, to Google stuff. Senator Pichai gave us some pretty amazing numbers. Good morning. Welcome to Google I.O. Two billion. Two billion active Android users. No big deal. Two billion. <laughs> That's more that, than in one billion users for Google f search for... Uh, YouTube for Chrome for Maps. These are daily active users. Yeah, uh, I mean it's just it's just remarkable. People watched a billion hours of YouTube video a day. 1.2 billion videos and photos uploaded every day to Google Photos. Oh my God. <laughs> half the a scale billion, is just out of this. Half world. a billion active Google Photos users. 18. I'm sorry. One billion kilometers. That's a B, not an A. One billion kilometers navigated every day. Every day. With, I'm not surprised Google about Maps. that at all. Google Maps is, uh, by by and large, one of the best apps that Google makes. And look at that. 800 services. million active daily users on Google Drive. Yeah. And that's big growth there. So Some of those users. They always like to kick off these keynotes with kind of a pat themselves on the back kind of it, talk. You're guaranteed to get all the outlets writing the article that, that kind of flaunts their insane numbers out of it. And yet, I mean, what it tells me is this is a company that's operating at a scale hitherto unknown. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, even Facebook doesn't have two billion users. I mean, that's amazing. They're certainly both playing on this in the same ballpark. Yeah, uh, yeah they're both playing giants. the same game, yeah. and and they're yeah. they're doing some pretty insane numbers as a result. Pachai said that uh, we had been in a mobile first world. Even yeah. that was kind of new for a lot of us. But I go back to the desktop first, desktop operating system. Yeah. Then you remember with the advent of the iPhone, it became about mobile, mm -hmm. and in the last five or six years. Google, Facebook, everybody's trying to figure out how do we make it on mobile. He says, not that anymore. Change. It's mobile first has gone to AI first. Yeah, and you know what what this really is when you really think about it, Google did something in mobile with Android where they have clearly dominated to a you know a wide margin, 2 billion active Android devices wow. all around the world. They basically send let's take the mobile uh, you know the, the mobile landscape and paint it with our own brush and let as many people in as possible. Now they're shifting gears. Obviously that's still very important, but the next direction and what we've been hearing about especially in the Last couple of years has pause been it. this dedication to artificial intelligence. Pa pause it right so they're here. doing that with AI now. They're kind of taking the, the strategy that worked with Android and, and mobile devices, and they're broadening that out so that they can pull developers in and empower them to use AI in whatever ways that they want. Get them on their own, you know, TensorFlow. Which is what that's you're seeing them. I mean, you're seeing Google Home. You're seeing. They mentioned that they're going to have uh, something new, Google Lens, in photos that will recognize your photos and help you understand them better. Yep. But look at this. They showed. Back, go back to that sl the shot that I was asking you to pause on. They showed that they're now adding Smart Reply. Everybody uses Gmail is going to have Smart Reply. Yep. And they showed some Smart Replies, except, I don't know if you noticed, but this wasn't the smartest reply. <laughs> hey, Wilton Marsalis is playing this weekend. Do you prefer Saturday or Sunday? I'm down for either. Let's do Saturday. I'm fine with whatever. Look, Sunday was a bad day to begin <laughs> with, all right? Sunday, they had plans. <laughs> they left Sunday. I but, like to think that Google knew. Google had access to the calendar oh, and wow. said, your calendar is that. full on oh, Sunday. I'm not Sunday. even offering that up. I won't even give you. But I do have to say, <laughs> I have used those in Inbox, and I like those yeah. smart replies. And, they, they, you know, it's interesting to watch. And, I mean, I think these are very early days, baby steps. But as the computer gets smarter and smarter, it really can be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. Although you kind of feel a little like you're cheating a little bit when you use smart replies. Do you? I, I don't know. For me, sometimes I feel a little guilt. I'm like, I, what? I can't take the time to type out a five five second like actual <laughs> answer. I'm gonna take. Well, but really, that's what I would have said anyway. So who's gonna know the it's difference? It's just the start. It's yeah. just the start. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna. This lens thing is cool. You can take a picture yeah. of a flower. It'll tell you what the flower is. Take a picture of an item. It'll tell you what it is and where to buy it. Uh, this is going to be built into Google Photos, and it'll be part of the camera. There'll be mm -hmm. a lens button, I guess, in Google's Android O that will let you say, oh, I'm, 
But now this is like the Fire Phone. Amazon tried to do this. With there the was phone. that, and Google yeah. did it before, actually, with an, with an app called Google Goggles, which was very similar. Um, this was like 2011 era. I Android. asked, I asked uh, the woman who was working on uh, integrating this into image search, and she said, well, the difference is Goggles was pre-populated yep. with stuff it knew. Yep. This is artificial intelligence, so it's learning all the time. It's happening on the fly, in the cloud, yeah. soon to be on the device, you, what you can imagine, because you know, we'll probably talk about it. In well, a they even said that they imagine light. that future phones will have yep. a tensor processing unit, a, smart, a, unit, a chip designed to do artificial intelligence Absolutely. in the hardware. Yep. Built embedded into the embedded phone. silicon in the Look phone. Look at this. I love this. To this. Point it at, a, at the restaurants on the street you're at. It'll <laughs> tell you the rating of the restaurant, the name. You can make a reservation. I think that's augmented reality. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, it's totally. That's a great representation, a great example of the usefulness of augmented reality. My fear with this, I really think this is, this is a really, this is one of the, there weren't a whole lot of announcements at this event that were eye-popping that were like, oh, wow, that was really cool to watch. This was one of those. I wonder if it ends up being one of those feature kind of like uh, Google Now on Tap, where when you finally get it, you use right. it a handful of times and then you forget about it. This often happens with these things. Yeah. First of all, most of the things we saw at Google I.O. on Wednesday aren't available yet. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed. I wanted the photo sharing, and photos looked great. You know, yeah. you can share with a family member. They can share Shared with you. You can automatically oh. share. So anytime you take a picture of your kids, it'll automatically be shared with your spouse. Because it's already doing facial recognition, right? When you well, use photos, it's already right. going through and saying, all of these photos are of your child. Give that child a name. Now you can say all of those photos that you recognize that are of my child, instantly share those with my wife through her Photos app. And They'll you know automatically go over, and even if I delete it on my end, she still keeps it. It's kind of, it mimics the real world idea of sharing. If I give you yeah. a photo that's printed on something, even if I decide I don't want you to have it anymore, uh, you still get to keep it. So keep that in mind. It's a shared forever sort of and thing. And you'll recognize this, but maybe you don't know about it yet. But as the dad, the photo taker in the family, you won't be in any <laughs> pictures. You'll look back at your daughter's nah. pictures, and there won't be any of you because you're taking them all. This happened to me. <sighs> yeah. That's going to be solved now because your wife will also right. be taking pictures, which you'll be in. Yeah. They'll be shared and automatically part of your photos. This, I think that's nice. This feature <laughs> actually good. answered a personal, uh, something from my own personal wish list. Because in order to do this up until now, my wife and I have shared the same Google account just for this. Oh. So we have, and basically it's mine, uh, so basically all of our photos are shared to one single account, so we have access to all of them. And that's bad for a number of reasons. Yes. Like having my account exist on another device for security purposes. I don't care if my wife has access to my account. It's just security purposes if that phone gets lost. Right. Hey, there's, there's my uh, account out there. So this allows me to kind of peel that back and share the proper way. They also announced some updates for home, but the one that I thought was very interesting and really, I think, uh, puts us in the future a little bit. The Google Home device will be able to make place calls to any phone. Remember, Amazon's going to do Hello? it from Amazon to Echo. Hello? To any, any phone yeah. in the country, in the U.S. and Canada. So I can say, call mom. It will, I will have a, f a conversation through my, just this replaces your phone. That is really cool. And there's no cost. Long distance calling was just made free by that. If you have one, um, you can sync your phone number to it. So when you call right. someone through your home, you. they, will, they will see you calling. Um, yeah, I mean, totally. That seems like seems a Seems like a no-brainer. Seems like a, a feature Boy. that needs to be there. I've wondered why you couldn't talk to people through your home because I've heard that it has, you know, in order to pick up the vo voice detection, it has very good microphones. But they kind of lapped board. Amazon because Amazon announced Echo to Echo calling. Right. Now but you, video calling. So what do you think is more valuable, video calling? Nobody or, wants video calling. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. But, but in fact, Megan, a little later, will show us how you can use your Echo to call another Echo, but you can't call a phone. Right. This lets you call phones so for free. Cool. That is no really more, cool. I'm on long distance, it's, I'm in a hurry, quick. Now, what I wonder is at what point we get handoff, because it, it would be really nice if you start a call here and then you're like, you got to go, you want to keep that call going, transfer to my phone, leave the house. I think it's just a switch. You know, this didn't have Bluetooth until they flipped the switch. Apparently, I know, right, but it was there. There's a Bluetooth there. radio in this, too. You can pair it with your phone. Uh, they announced books, uh, beautiful books I think to make and using artificial intelligence to make these books is a kind of an interesting idea um, I think they've picked a good provider I, they, I don't know who the provider is but the quality of the stock is yeah. good these are ten dollars started ten dollars for soft cover twenty dollars for the hardcover and they do 
I think, a good job. But what's the key, the, all, the googly part of all this, is you just say, make a book of my trip, you know, to the Grand Canyon. It'll pick the what it thinks are the best pictures. You go through them and reject them if you want or, or pick new ones. But basically, you can have these done kind of automatically. Yeah, you know, it, 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 they demonstrated selecting just a large swath of pictures. It goes through, it determines of those pictures what are the best. And the, I don't think that the idea is necessarily, I mean, it could be that you would just do that and accept willy-nilly exactly what they, what well, they we'll say and print well it out. It picks them. But it's a really great starting point. Yeah. You know, it, it picks out, let's say, 16 out of the 20 images you like. Right. And then you only have to go digging for four more. Right. Well, I'm going to test it because I'm going on vacation in nice. uh, three weeks. So, look at that too. A yeah, full, a two full page truck, spread. two page. Uh, I don't even think Apple's uh, books can do that. Looks so, nice. Apple maybe makes nicer books, and of course, they give you a lot more capabilities. Apple Blurb, a lot of these others. You can mm -hmm. put text captions in and stuff. This is very simple, but I think I have a feeling I might be using that. Quite I a think bit. I will too. They announced VR goggles. Mm -hmm. uh, we, they've had Google Daydream for a while, but they kind of leapfrogged Microsoft. HTC, Facebook, by saying they're going to make VR goggles that don't have to be connected to anything. You don't need a phone. That's a daydream where you put your phone in it. The new ones will be standalone. They'll, they'll have the equivalent of a phone built in, and you won't need to be connected to a computer. The battery, the juice, the screen, everything will be all complete. They didn't announce availability or pricing, but they did say that HTC and Lenovo? Lenovo. Are yeah, going to be HTC and these. Lenovo. HTC's already kind of advertising it on their site. Yeah, I, I mean, another really big part of, component of this, they did something that I've been wondering why they didn't do to begin with with Daydream, is that they're integrating their Project Tango technology into here for something called WorldSense, which essentially gives these, uh, these standalone goggles the capability of inside-out tracking. So you don't need cameras positioned in the room to know where you are in space. You it can knows. move around. It knows because basically when you think about Tango technology and how it's working, it's constantly hitting the room with these multiple cameras and sensors to determine where obstacles are and to create an ongoing map, a more complex map over time. So they even say the more uh, The Verge was able to spend some time with the standalone goggles, they say the more you use it in a single room, the better it gets because the better a map it's able to create around it. I'd love to know the price point on this, but yeah. I think this is for schools. I think that the idea is a school might buy five or ten of these. Oh, I could see that. See what I'm because saying? they were touting pretty heavily in the Tango area. I got to play around with Expeditions, which is their school mm -hmm. platform, which there they announced mm -hmm. AR capability now. So, you know, it showed all the kids with uh, selfie mm -hmm. sticks and the and the Tango phone basically looking like the demonstration that I had. It was a model of space in front of us, and we were able to go around the planets and take a look and go underneath and I see this I, it's the first time I've ever used a selfie stick, though, so I felt really <laughs> weird. What but, about, uh, they yeah, talked about it. Tango and the ability to map indoor spaces. Yeah. I think this is Google trying to do Google Maps and Google Navigation for stores, oh, right? Yeah, that's so right. So you walk into off. a giant store, you know, a Home Depot or a Lowe's, they give the example of Lowe's, and you say, well, I need uh, blue paint. And it says, it knows, and it says, okay, and you get an arrow and you get navigation. I mean, seriously, this is how cool is that? That yeah. is so cool. That's kind of, I find that uh, interesting. Uh, the, Tango will fit into smaller and smaller phones. Yep. And I think Google's hope is that, that, that phones will come Tango. Will come. Here yeah. we go. That would be the navigation you would see. Hey, your screwdriver's over here. Over yeah, here. Over Here's here. The, the light bulb. Follow the light bulb. I got to play around with the new Asus, um, the new Zen Zenfone phone that comes out yeah. this summer. That's what was in the Tango demonstration area. And I mean, it's as small and thin as any modern day phone. That was the problem with old Tango devices, that they were big, they were clunky. They were the internals were a little out of date. Right. And this is kind of like your normal phone, but with Tango capability. And that's pretty exciting for someone. One I don't last know how thing. widespread that is. One last thing. You, were, you're, you, know, you host all about Android. Yep. Uh, what do you think of this uh, Android O? You installed it. You and Jeff Jarvis immediately installed it. I yeah, I mean, you know, they, they pushed out the dev the first preview public to the beta, beta channel, yep. and you can have that uh, happen pretty seamlessly in an automatic update. I installed it. So far, I'm liking it. There's little bugs here and there. The notification channels is actually pretty neat. Um, you know, uh, notification dots, so when you 
get an update in Twitter, let's say, the icon will show a little dot. It doesn't show you the number, so it's not as stressful. You know, it's just like, <laughs> here's a little dot that lets you know something happened in something here. Something happened. I think the big story with O is less about the, the whiz-bang features, because you're not going to find a whole lot of those. Picture-in-picture, picture, smart text selection, whatever, there's a few of them. I think the bigger picture with O is it's a lot more on kind of the foundation, what's happening underneath. They announced something called Vitals, which is their... Uh, taking a closer look and, re and doing some re-architecture underneath to allow for better battery, which is something they've been working on for a long time. Better security, they, they spend a lot of time with Google Play Protect, which is constantly scanning and flagging inside the, the Play Store for you know, making sure that your apps are okay. Uh, startup time, I've never had a phone startup as fast as this Pixel does now with, with the new version of Android O. They really, they cut it in half and stability. But even beyond that, an announcement that didn't hit the stage that I think is probably one of the most important announcements for Android this year is Project Treble, which Tr is... Treble? Treble, as in... I thought you said trouble. As in, <laughs> it's all about the bass, no treble. No treble. That was Dave Burke's it's, explanation it's to Megan, me. It's the Megan Trainer feature. Yes, what exactly. Is it? <laughs> well, basically what they're doing, he, he said this was the biggest re-architecture um, that they've done to date of Android underneath the hood. Really? And what they're doing is they're separating Android, the OS, from all the vendor modified components. They're making it, in my, in my sense, it feels a little bit more like Windows, where they're allowing, they're working towards this reality where they can update Android, the OS aspects of Android, separate from anything that vendors are doing. So vendor hardware that's you know been tweaked and customized, uh, maybe eventually that extends out to on the top customizations that Samsung's doing with TouchWiz or whatever the case, but that's not treble at this point. It's just specific to kind of the hardware components underneath, and it's the beginning of something very big. It addresses the update issue, like directly. And now, I'm really excited about it, if you can't tell.